I take uh, this privilege in introducing you to our very own Mr. Thomas. Uh, so, Mr. Thomas started his solar and clean tech adventure in 2004 in the capital of Europe, that is Brussels, by joining a team of EPIA, that is the European Photovoltaic Industry Association, today which is known as Solar Power Europe. As EPIA's financial and administrative manager, he was responsible for growing its membership from 40 to over 200 members. Management of Europe projects co-founded by the European Commission and increasing and managing the budget by tenfold during the four years with this most influential solar industry association, not only in Europe, but also world. In 2009, he founded this clean tech business TV, the reference TV business platform for solar and clean tech industries that brings the key knowledge to the business, financial and political decision makers. During the last decade, he has been advising political and business decision makers across the globe while helping national and regional industry associations in having their voice reflected in respective legislations. Today, he streamlines the vision of the clean tech business club, formerly known as Solar Business Club, private and independent human to human leadership club that brings together trusted leaders of clean tech and other disruptive industries with the leaders of financial and investor community big corporates energy companies and utilities as well as political decision makers and public opinion influence he is driven by the power of h2h and united dna clean tech business club leaders anticipate shape and lead the world's transformation with this mr thomas the floor is all yours and uh, uh, you may take it over Thank you so much, uh, Shada, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Rush, once again for this uh, kind invitation. One picture always can say more than uh, 1,000 words, yes? And you can Absolutely. see uh, our short history of the club. And just uh, because um, Rush uh, was mentioning about uh, all these interconnections, and just recently we had great news about uh, uh, Aqua Power. So they are going to build uh, 10 gigawatt. Uh, um, cable uh, from uh, Morocco to uh, to UK. Yes, so you see, so this is huge. Yes, and here we can see also the picture with the CEO of Aqua Power, with Mr. Paddy, uh, who was uh, receiving the award, our award, from the hands of Acon. Yes, and Acon is a quite famous singer, and now is building uh, sustainable cities in in Africa, but also uh, with our friends in the United States. Now he started to build, I think, uh, one gigawatt of solar projects. Yes. So this is just uh, a digression to the... Uh, so our club is uh, present in over 60 countries. And of course, uh, uh, we have to be in India, yes? And as you can see on the pictures, uh, I am European, but my heart is always in India. And I, I'm really, really looking forward to come back to India, uh, maybe still in this year. And uh, Rash was mentioning uh, Solar Alliance. And here you can see uh, the picture of Rush together with, uh, with Mr. Upendra and also with our friend and co-chair of the club in India, uh, Mr. Pranav Mehta. And uh, just recently we had also very great news that uh, Germany joined, uh, besides France, Germany also uh, joined uh, Solar Alliance. Yes. And now I would like to put you a few minutes uh, film. I think this will give you, you know, a, uh, like a background, yes, to the further discussion. Let me check if the sound will be good. Of all the species that have already set foot on my lands, humans probably are one of the most complex, one of the most interesting. I've been watching over them, seen them evolve centuries after centuries. It seems that today, they might have a crucial choice to make. We're at that point right now in the 2020s where civilization could collapse or we can take it to the higher order. Humanity needs to make foundational choices. Everywhere, some of them understood that something has to be done to maintain the original harmony. You are seeing a lot of uh, problem due to what's happening with a lot of, uh, of, of CO2 emission and beyond expectation. Believe me. I wish things were different. So whether over the next 10, 20 years, we collapse or we break through to an amazing new world depends on our choices.
solar energy was criticized in the past because it required huge support from the, the public. Here we are again. The mainstream analysts were saying, no, the transition, not even disruption, is going to be slow. It's going to happen in the 2040s or 50s. It's going to be expensive. Does this technology is reliable? Can we make a lot out of it? What will be the future of this technology? We looked at the following question. Is an electric power system composed only of solar, wind, and batteries possible? Is it possible by 2030? A lot of people don't think it's possible. My co-author and me, we looked at the history of humanity, essentially 10,000 years of humanity. Our conclusions were astonishing. Well, I have mine too, I'm afraid. The same processes of change and disruption that apply at the product level, at the sector level, also apply at the societal level. We are now in the 2020s on the cusp of the fastest, deepest transformation of humanity in history. Essentially, we're at the end of what we call the extraction order. So it looks like we're heading towards new lands, just like a pirate movie. I'm actually beginning to enjoy this. I just wonder, a whole new world. Is anybody working on it? At Ines, we are very optimistic. We are seeing a lot of hints, a lot of, of things going to the right direction. I'm surrounded with a lot of nice and competent and reliable people. And they are doing real things to get it, to get, to get the change done. We are serving the strong ambition of Europe and the whole world of decreasing the CO2 emission. Oh, sounds like allies to me. But wait, who are you again? Very simple, my name is uh, Anis Juigny. I'm Frederick Stork. I'm Tony Seba. And I'm... You can call me Gaius. I'm heading the solar technology department at CA Ines. I am the director of energy transition and innovation at CNR in Lyon, the French leading producer of exclusively renewable energy. I'm the co-founder of RethinkX. CA, as you know, is more than 20,000 research in France on different activity. One of them is the energy sector. Our mission is really clear. It's innovation for industry. It needs to be competitive, it needs to be eco-friendly, and you need to make it in, in a very short time in total agreement with the common roadmap between the industrial partners. We want to recreate an ecosystem, an industrial ecosystem for manufacturing high quality and reliable and economically viable PV system components. It's not about hope necessarily. I mean, a lot of people told me in the past, you're too optimistic, but it's not about optimism. It's about data. It's about science. It's the convergence of technologies that enable the big disruptions, the 10x disruptions. If you go back to the smartphone, both the iPhone and the Android came out 2007. Why 2007? That's because all the technologies to build a $600 smartphone converged. 2006. Another lesson of disruption is convergence. Wait a minute. What's a disruption? I mean, a 10x disruption. In report, he used to say that when people asked him in the early 1900s about cars, they said that all they wanted was um, a faster horse. You know, he was not building. The car was not a faster horse. The, the car was a 10x disruption. It went 10x faster. It went 10x further, it was 10x cheaper, and so on. Why did nobody see it coming? Fast horse syndrome. Before disruptions happen, mainstream analysts and experts and insiders um, essentially have the what I call the fast horse syndrome. The, the car allowed us to build a whole new economy, and for good or worse, right? Uh, it enabled the oil economy, it enabled the car economy. It enabled suburban life. It enabled the highway system. So essentially 20th century society was built on that innovation, the car. Disruptions, once they tip, once the old system ruptures and the new system tips, it happens very, very quickly. Okay, now we have the ideas, but ideas remain ideas until people start believing in it, right? 
the financial sector is increasingly turning away from these historical activities to go on more sustainable sectors, which is a source of growth and which is more in accordance uh, to the expectations of citizens. We have seen that all those big guys getting very interested to renewable and putting a lot of investment. Today, it's a part of their portfolio the, with the fossil fuel and other sort of technology, which, by the way, decreasing or disappearing, letting the place for renewable energy. That sounds way better. Oh, sorry. Carry on. They will be one of the main players pushing renewables to a new phase, to a second phase, completely different than the one that we have seen till today, because we are not anymore fighting about the PV system, is it competitive or not, so it's reliable technology, and the whole PV system is getting uh, really more and more reliable and more and more economically competitive uh, towards a smart solution which can be combined everywhere. It's in there, and how to get it sustainable for long term. It will be a new era for renewable energy and for PV with those players who really are very present in the energy sector. A new era, you say? How inspiring is that? I wonder how far we could push this transformation. What can we expect? Will our everyday environment change as well? Think about the idea that everything will be energy. PV is cheaper than structural plywood. So don't just make cheaper solar panels. We're going to have cars with, you know, solar on top. We're going to have, you know, houses. And not just on the rooftop. For instance, we are currently working with Ines and TNR to integrate solar on the road dikes. We are trying to design linear power plants rather than rectangular, which will provide uh, great sources of production, around one megawatt per kilometer. That sounds amazing! That changes everything. This implies opportunities for the relocation of the industry, so it also implies job creation. We must now focus on making it more efficient to meet more of the demand for electricity, thanks to a better integration in the electric grid, thanks to storage, and thanks to uses, which is the objective of next US. We started that in the past, one megawatt module was huge. But today, a lot of people are talking about one gigawatt power plants. And it's going to, if you, if you are able to make one, then you are able to make 10. And this is what people in Australia, they want to make. And this is what people in Abu Dhabi or in Qatar or in Saudi Arabia, they already made. Elon Musk saw the opportunity space, right? And solar entrepreneurs saw the opportunity space. And the folks who've been doing batteries for 10 years saw the opportunity space, right? Today, it's the energy source is here, is reliable. There is a trust of normal people and decision makers. For sure, then there will be a very bright future. And we came up with, uh, with one sentence which can summarize everything. And in this, this sentence says, PV everywhere, for everybody and forever. So I think that uh, you like this uh, show entertainment and I think it showed uh, exactly where we will go, yes? And uh, uh, as you saw on the, on the movie, the, uh, we showed uh, a New York, yes? In, uh, at the beginning of last century. And uh, can you see the car here? Actually, there is only one car, yes? And it was in uh, 1900. And just 13 years later, the same uh, Fifth Avenue in New York. Where is the horse? So there is only one horse. So imagine that during just 13 years, the car industry disrupted 60,000 years old horse industry. So, so this is uh, actually the difference between innovation and disruption, yes? So, Innovation is doing the same things a bit better, but disruption is actually to making completely new things, which are making other old things obsolete. Yes, so you can see in different industries how the new technologies practically killed the old technologies. And there is a lot of big companies, yeah, who practically uh, missed yes this technology disruption and. As you see on the example of Kodak, Nokia, for example, they disappeared from the market. And what is always the most funny than the, uh, let's say, the big experts, they always uh, underestimate a disruption. Yes. 
And uh, this is, uh, you see, when we think about the future, we, like uh, by our nature, always think in the linear way, yes? And uh, because of that, very often we don't see and we miss actually the opportunities uh, which are connected uh, with the uh, disruption. And I would like to just uh, ask you some question. I don't know if I can, I can see the chat, but uh, you can just respond, uh, you know, uh, internally in your, in your heads. So how do you think how many journalists is employed by, by the biggest news provider in the world? And who is it? So, you know, like even if I speak with some CEOs, etc., they say, I know maybe like uh, 100,000, uh, maybe this is uh, a Wall Street Journal or something like this. And the truth is zero, yes? <laughs> because the biggest news provider today is uh, Facebook. And Facebook has no journalists, yes? But it's producing the biggest number of, of news. And uh, how many hotels owns the biggest room, yes, nights uh, service provider? And who is it? So often people, they say, I don't know, like thousands of hotels, and this is Hilton or something like this. But the truth is, again, zero, yes? And this is Airbnb, actually. And they don't own any, any hotel. And uh, this is very easy. How many cars owns the biggest person per kilometers uh, service provider? And who is it? Again, zero. And it is Uber, yes? So this is just an example how the new uh, technologies, uh, the new service providers uh, practically kill the other industries. And what we believe in our club, that within next decade, practically we are coming from the horse to the cars, yes? So let's say that within next decade, maybe 15 years, the solar plus wind plus storage system will practically 100% replace the old system. So it's not like you see about improving the system which exists, but about creating the new system which will completely replace the system which exists, yes? So a lot of people, you know, even like Irina, they are discussing how to more, how to, integrate more uh, renewables in the existing system, how to improve it, it will take 50 years. And actually, this is the biggest problem. Yeah? So people, they should forget about the system which exists, that sh they should see the things, imagine the future, and they should think about the new system which will completely replace the system which exists. You see, so you can see like this. So practically the new system will come and the old system which exists now will disappear. And this is the best example always I like uh, to show the example of India. And you remember maybe in 90s, uh, 80s, 90s, India had just uh, maybe like 1 million of uh, la landlines, yes? And you see, and uh, the biggest uh, experts, they were saying, you know, maybe in 50 years, India will have 50 million landline phones, yes? Because the industry will be growing in the linear way. And imagine what happened in the meantime the mobile phone arrived, yes? So today, practically, people, they are not using a landline, but they are using mobile phones, yes? And you see, like before, in India, uh, per capita, Indians, they had uh, almost the lowest number of phones in the world, yes? And today, you have the biggest number of phones, yes? So the same will happen pro probably with, uh, with uh, uh, clean energy. So here you can see that, uh, I remember I started in solar 20 years ago. So imagine the prices of the system were over 100 times more expensive than today, yes? And uh, just within the last 10 years, the solar costs went down to, uh, by 82%. And imagine solar is now the cheapest source of energy, but it's not yet end, yes? Because during the next decade, this price will go down by another 72%. Uh, wind also has a huge opportunities of reduction of price, but even bigger reduction of price we can see in the battery costs. So already today, combined solar, wind and battery system is the cheapest source of energy. And what is interesting that this cheaper source of energy will be again cheaper 70% than today. And uh, we don't have too much time to explain all the, how does it work, the, the model which developed uh, Tony Siba. But here we can see that uh, 
Well, the more generating capacity we add, yes, from solar and wind combined, the lowest number of uh, battery costs we need. Yes, and uh, to supply, let's say, 100% of electricity uh, with just 21 hours of storage per year, in average in India, uh, we need uh, 4.8 uh, of uh, 4.8 uh, bigger capacity, electricity capacity that uh, today in India. But uh, people say, okay, this must be very expensive. But uh, so this is uh, how uh, Tony Siba and his team made uh, the the forecast. So actually, they analyzed the uh, demand. Uh, for the last two years in India, and they calculated what would be the total capital cost for India to put completely 100% uh, system uh, uh, combined with solar and wind. As you can see here in India, he foresees that uh, uh, as India has such uh, amazing solar resources, it would be uh, 10, per 10 times more solar than, uh, than wind. And you can see that uh, the capex of 100% uh, uh, complete system only with solar, wind, and storage would cost 365 billion US dollars during the next decade, yes? But what is very interesting that in his model, you saw this U curve, yes? So the much generating capacity from solar and wind we add, the smallest number of, uh, of storage we need, yes? And the biggest uh, cost always in the system is storage. So then just by increasing 20% of investment, yes, we can increase almost 200% um, um, the production of electricity in India. So what is very interesting that, so Tony name is, uh, names it superpower, yes? And when we discussed with Tony, he said, Thomas, you will see in the future, energy will be almost for free, yes? So like today you have, uh, when you, Imagine before, yes, when, when uh, the int internet was introduced, yes? So uh, you need to pay maybe like $10 just for one hour connection of internet, yes? Because it was a new product on the market. But today, internet is for free, yes, almost. You go to the restaurant and you get uh, internet for free. So what we believe with Tony, that in the future, maybe even within the next decade, electricity will be free, yes? So it actually, is uh, in compliance and in the line with the uh, dream of, uh, of Tila, of Rush and his team, uh, that everybody has rights to energy. You see, so what we believe that we will, need, uh, we will not need to fight for this rights to energy because this rights will come by itself, by the thanks to the fact that solar energy, that clean energy will be so cheap. And you will see that in the future, in 10 years, when we meet, for example, with you in 10 years, and we will discuss about the past, you will see that energy will also be for free. Yes? So for example, you go uh, to the restaurant and, uh, and uh, someone gives you the energy for free. Yes? The same will be with the transportation. And what is very interesting here that just by increasing 20% of investment in this generating capacity from solar and wind, we can get 200% or 300% more of electricity. Yes, so which means that we will not just be able to uh, cover the demand for electricity, but we will create the new markets for electricity. We will be able to uh, cover with this electricity other sectors, transportation sectors, uh, residential heating sectors, even industrial sector. Yes, so already in the United States, a lot of steel producers, they are building uh, power plants, uh, solar power plants close to the factories, yes? Then there is also a lot of, uh, um, let's say, a forecast with regards to the storage related to the hydrogen, yes? We don't have too much time, but I will give you the links so Tony will explain you very well how this superpower system will work for India. But uh, I think that this is very interesting uh, message that I would like to give you, especially uh, taking into account this uh, COVID situation right now in India. Because uh, Tony analyzed uh, the human civilization uh, since 10,000 years ago, and he uh, also made a forecast, yes? And I, I was really surprised when he told me that actually not China, 
but India will be the quick, quickest transforming country within the next 20, 30 years. And uh, what he also believes that India can become energy superpower, yes, but under the condition that your authorities, but also the, um, uh, the people in the country, they understand, and then they will act very quickly to replace the old system uh, of uh, energy supply uh, with the new solar plus wind plus battery storage system. So uh, let me just play 30 seconds film because this is also quite interesting. <laughs> So on the 21st of June, we launch our new global platform. And of course, in partnership with, uh, uh, with TILA. And uh, I didn't disclose yet to the members of the club, but uh, so, so uh, Rush, uh, please keep it still one week uh, confidential. But we launch uh, 21st of June, which is Solstice Day. So the day when we produced, you know, the biggest amount of solar energy, because this is the most sunny day in, uh, during the year, the World FinTech Day. Yes, and we launch our new global platform. And one of the, plat of the parts of the platform will be related also to uh, education, yes, because we created in, in France at INES uh, CleanTech Business Institute. So we will also be cooperating closely with, uh, with TILA. And as I always say, uh, together we are, we are stronger. I'm very happy that uh, besides France, also Germany joined uh, the International Solar Alliance. And I believe that uh, during next decade, uh, India will work closely with Europe in order you know, to help India to be the energy superpower. So thank you so much. I hope you don't have too many questions. <laughs> no, I'm thank joking, you of so course. Much. Uh, just I would like to say that, uh, that uh, you, you could see on the pictures that um, the power of our club is actually uh, inside of our members, yes, because we have members from different sectors. Uh, from industry, but also from uh, from science, uh, from financial work, etc. So, in case of any question, actually, we are able to respond to any question. So, and also we are able to connect you with all the players. And as uh, Tila is our partner in India, we can always connect you through Tila. And uh, once again, thank you so much. And uh, you see, like I always say, together we are stronger.